Hi everyone and welcome to my 2020 WIP Parade. This is Anne P of Fiber Floss and Fiction, but today this particular video is going to just focus on my cross stitch projects uh, with a WIP Parade and I'm going to talk about some plans for 2020, uh, 2021. See, I'm already a year behind. Um, if you're looking for my normal video, I just recorded one. That and its usual format will be up with its usual knitting books and a brief thing on cross stitch because I'm going to focus on cross stitch in this video specifically. Um, I'm not going to really do much in the way of numbers. Um, I had some good finishes this year in general. I was pretty satisfied with how much I got accomplished. I did meet all of my 20 in 20 stitching goals where I had 20 projects that I was trying to get finished um, or a certain set of goals for them. Uh, for, so for instance, like for my desert mandala, I wanted to get the top quarter done, which I did. So. There's going to be a fair amount of full coverage in this. Uh, I am whittle whittling down my non-full coverage pieces and we're going to talk about that and kind of look forward to some of my progress goals for 2021 and how I'm going to be managing things. Um, there's a lot of things that are going to be driven by the challenges that we've got happening in the full coverage fanatics book group on Facebook. Um, so be prepared for a lot of full coverage is I think what I'm trying to tell you for 2021. Um, let's go ahead and start with a couple of things of note. I have two projects that I have in, in process. They're ones that I'm working on, uh, meaning they're started, but I've come to the conclusion that I'm not happy with them for various and sundry reasons. And while I'm not officially calling them a do not finish project, they are going to go into indefinite UFO status. So let's talk about those two projects first. The first of these is this project, which is 12 days. If you watch Dina over at Half Stitch Cross Stitch, um, she finished hers this year. It came out so great. And that's been one of my struggles with this, which is I love the artwork. I think it's a, just a really fun piece. It's got all of the 12 days of Christmas, um, you know, the Leaping Lords and the Piper's Piping and all of that good stuff. And I like the folk art feel to it with this big star quilt behind it. I have no desire to stitch it. I just cannot get going on it. Um, I'm maybe a third of the way, not even, uh, let's call it I'm a quarter of the way completed on it. Um, it did come as a kit and I opted to not use the Ada that it came with because I wanted it to be a slightly smaller size, but I was using the kit floss. And so this is where I am on it. I think part of the problem is, so, you know, it may come out of hibernation at some point. Part of the problem is that I don't have much motivation to work on Christmas projects with any sort of focus except in December. And I have another project that I'm more motivated to work on for Christmas, which you'll see when we get to the full coverage pieces. So I just kind of never get to this one and it has a lot of back stitching, which is not a favorite of mine. I don't really mind it, mind it. I mean, I don't hate it. It's not enough to prevent me from doing a project, but I just, yeah. So this one in its current state is going to go to indefinite UFO status. So it's not something that I'm going to be counting as an active whip. It's not something that I've included in kind of my planning preparations. It just is what it is. The second piece is actually one that I started this past year. And again, I love the artwork, but I feel like if I'm going to spend my time on it, I might be better served choosing another 
project of this designer's to work on, and that is Teresa Wensler's Harvest Sampler. Um, this is available as a download from the online store where she has her patterns. It's the only place I've seen it anyway. Um, and it is typical Teresa Wensler. There's still a lot of blends in it. It's not as big as some of her other ones. Um, and I like it, but I don't love it. So here is where I had gotten to on it, which is basically just the very top border. Ooh, hang on, I'm trying to get my needles off that. Uh, the, the fabric is a color and cotton even weave in the colorway Barnwood. And you can see that I got most of the specialty stitches and things done and got that top border done except for the beads. So that's as far as I got on it this year. This was about a thousand stitches. And I've come to the conclusion that if I'm going to do a Teresa Wensler with all of the things that doing a Teresa Wensler project involves, meaning blended threads and beads and sparkle and other things like that, I'm going to do one of her dragons or one of her like fantasy fairy tale ones. I don't love this project enough to see it through to the end. And I'm trying to give myself permission to UFO things that I don't really see myself working on with any likelihood anytime in the next decade. So those are technically whips, but you will likely not see them again, or if you do, it will be very, very far in the future. So got those off the plate early. Let's go ahead and talk about my non full coverage pieces first. Uh, let's see here. Um, this one I showed just briefly in my uh, previous regular video. That is Long Dog Sampler's The Pilgrim. I have started it down in this corner. Well, kind of this section right here, and I'm working that way for now. And then I'll work this way to finish kind of this section when I get to it. This is being stitched on a 36 count linen. Colorway is Butternut from Crossed Wing Designs, which I picked up at the attic uh, when I was there for McKenna's um, retreat, not this past April, but April 2019, long time ago. I'm stitching this using one strand of silk from Silks For You. I have this page completely finished, and I have this one about half done. So this is the big Kelpie in the water. Now my plan for this this past year was that I was doing a day or so once a month on it. This is not actually on my active list for whips to be worked on in 2021. So you probably will not see that one coming up this year unless I have some time unexpectedly that I've finished something else and have time to work on this. Um, so it's an, it's a more recent start. It's not as big a priority for me to have a goal on. Liked working on that quite a bit this year because it is a single color of floss and you can just sit and sit and work on it. Uh, let's see next up. <clears throat> is Joan Elliott's Autumn Fairy. Uh, you might remember I finished Winter Fairy this year. Autumn Fairy is in progress. I have not worked on her this year, I don't think at all, and I, I will likely not do anything else on her in, in 2021 either, but here is where she is. This is a 32 count even weave, a Murano, from Chromatic Alchemy in the colorway, sorry, trying to read it through the bag's plastic, Feronia. And I am using the called for DMC and all the other floss. So 
So this one likely not out in 2021, but likely will be a focus piece in 2022. Um, I have another Joan Elliott, which I will get to as we go along to some more firmed up plans that I would like to focus on for this year. And since I finished Winter Fairy, uh, this one has less of a need to be focused on. All right. Next up is a Brooks Books design. This is her Spirit of Evergreen. Uh, if you follow uh, Angela of Color and Cotton, she has been cranking on these. Um, uh, they're the Dimensional Angels, I think is what she calls them, but she's got a ton of different ones. I just happen to like this one best. It is a perforated paper piece and I don't have a ton of it done, but there is the start of the angel's hair. And I also have the beginnings of a wing. Not much. Um, this is one of those small but extremely futzy pieces. It's stitched all in different pieces. The wings are separate. And then once you get the body together, you've got all the ribbons and things to add. So it becomes kind of three dimensional. I think it's super pretty. Just have not focused on that this year. And also not on my short list for focused projects this, this year. I may take it with me if we do get some time to go camping. Um, possibly because it is slightly more portable than some of the other things that I have on tap. Um, let's see, what's this one? Nope, I'll come back to that one. Let me put this one over here because it's just the supplies. Okay, next up is Summer Sampler from the Cooler Design Studio. You can get this, it originally was a kit, Janlin kit, Possibly you can find it on eBay, but Cooler Design Studios has this as a PDF download from their website as well as the other three seasons. I worked on this a bit this summer and here is where it is. Not hugely far along. It's a detailed stitch, but I love it. I think the detail is amazing. Like just these seashells I love. So I'm stitching this on a 32 count even weave. The colorway is sand from X2 Designs and using the DMC uh, floss for it. Stitching two over two for the most part. There's a few things that aren't, but everything here is. So I enjoy working on this one when I have it out, um, but it probably will not be out much next year. Um, the reason I keep saying that is my plan is to basically take my whips and narrow things down to where I have four focus pieces for next year, which are kind of seasonal, and work on those for um, a set amount of time each month and try to at least get them, if not finished, very close to finishing or you know, in the home stretch. And I'm kind of saving those to the end. Okay, um, oop, that one is also for later on. Let's see where I am, because I think I might be coming to full coverage. I want to... Okay, this one is not technically full coverage, even though it looks like it should be. This is Companions Friendship, which I started this year. It's not technically full coverage by the standards of the full co coverage fanatics group because this white space around here is not stitched. This part is, and all of the detail, but it's not an even shape. It's like got a piece cut out of it basically that has no background. Um, 
So I am stitching this on a 25 count Lugana in the colorway Sage. And this is as far as I got on it this year. Is that right? Yes. That's it. So because this is not technically a full coverage piece, I'm not totally sure when I'll work on it. It may come out this year, it may not. We'll just see how I go. But it is one that I had wanted to start for a while, so I am happy to have that on the go and at, at least at a beginning has happened on it. Okay, next. This is the piece that I have been working on most recently to kind of finish out the year, and that is the Blue Flowers Huckleberry Farm. This was a new start this year. Love this one. It's such a fun sampler. Um, I am stitching this on a 35 count linen from the Primitive Hair, one thread over two. I had this done, the big house, the big house. And I worked the border across this stitching session and I am currently working on the mountain scene with the, the bear. I'm using a combination of color and cotton and ga uh, gas, gentle arts threads, hand dyed my conversion to stitch this one up. Love it. I'm having a blast working on it right now. Um, and since this one is also not on my short list, this is probably the only time it'll get some love here for the next year. <clears throat> Here's my flosses for that. Yeah. I kind of feel like I should be stitching this for my friend Christina. She uh, grew up in Alaska and makes huckleberry things and I just she loves lime green I don't know every time I pull this out I feel like it, it has kind of has her name on it so maybe it will one day we'll see okay so that gets me through all of the things I have that are hang on let me make sure I didn't miss something um, that are currently active whips that will likely not see the light of day next year, if that makes any sense. So let's move on to the things that I have earmarked to have as focus pieces for next year. Okay, the first one of these, and this is going to be my kind of January, February, March project, is Joan Elliott's Celtic Wheel. <coughs> Excuse me. You can find this pattern in Bewitching Cross Stitch. Amazon has copies. I'm sure you can find it on eBay too. It is a square design that has all of the Celtic seasons on it. So Samhain, Yule, uh, Mabon, all of those. And kind of corresponding plant flowers for them. It's done as a cushion here, but I'm gonna frame mine when I get when I get it done, which hopefully will happen in 2021. That should be a motto, right? Get it done 2021. I'm stitching this on a 32 count uh, even weave in sampler gold from Color and Cotton, and so I finished this page this year. And I would love to have this piece completely finished in 2021. I'm at the halfway mark, as you can see. So a fair amount of stitching left to do um, and a fair amount of back stitching as well. But I love the detail on it and I really would like to have it on my wall. So um, it's a goal. So my plan for the, the four quarters worth of projects is I'm going to spend 10 days a month working on them. Doesn't necessarily have to be a consecutive 10 days, but 10 days a month working on the 
this particular project for quarter one. So that'll give me 30 days, the equivalent of 30 days. If I finish the project in that time, then I can go on and work on something else. And so I can pull something from the stack that's over here that you guys have already seen of projects that um, aren't earmarked for the year. Um, just kind of whatever I, I'm in the mood for at that particular moment. Or I can work on some more full coverage, which I have a lot of pretty high goals on for. So we'll see. Um, but that one will be out uh, in January for 10 days. So you'll see that one you know, fairly early on. Uh, let's see, quarter two. Um, and again, these are sort of seasonal, but not quite. That one's kind of a year round, so it could happen anytime. Um, this piece is what I'm gonna work on for Q2. It is the Drawn Threads Summer Garden. And you might notice I have the winter garden done right there. This is currently up year round because I love it so much, but it is not at all seasonal in the spring and summer and fall. Um, I have all four of these and would like to stitch all of them at some point, but this is the one that I want to focus on for this year. Um, I'm stitching this on a witch out linen. The colorway is French lace. And I worked on this a little bit this year, I think, but not very much. Here is what I have done. I have the house started, the big brick house, and I have all of the lettering done, all of that back stitching to kind of center it in space. So there's quite a bit to be done on this, but again, it will have 10, day, 10 days in April, May, and June, so a total of 30 days. And I'm hoping I can get I'm hoping I can get it done in that amount of time. That would be awesome. That would be awesome if I could. Um, I'm using my own color conversion, mostly gentle arts. Um, I'll probably wind up using some color and cotton hand dyed floss for some of the flowers, but I just love that just profusion of of flowers. We have a hard time here with flowers. We have a lot of deer and rabbits in the yard and some things they just have taken down to nothing. Even things that are deer resistant um, like cactus. Whatever. Anyway, that's my quarter two focus project. Quarter three <clears throat> is going to be Halloween Fairy. Sorry for the crinkling. By Nora Corbett. This is uh, a download available, PDF download available through Hirschner's. And I started it last year, I believe, and worked on it quite a bit um, this year for Halloween, but would like to get it done. Here's where I am. The fabric is a 28 count linen in antique peach from Color and Cotton. And then I'm using the Call for DMC and sparkly threads and beads when I get there. So I've got a fair amount of the actual cross stitching done. Obviously I need to finish her skirt and legs. And then there's the pumpkin that needs to get completed. All of this bits is either beads or um, Krynak. So I'm not sure how to gauge how much of this I have done, but let's say at least 25% and maybe more like a third. It's not a huge, it's not a huge project, especially not for a sort of Mira Nora Corbett piece. It's definitely doable size. So I'm hoping that I will be able to get that done quite easily in those 30 days without having to, you know, really stretch to try to get it accomplished. And I thought that would be a fun one to have in the fall. So 
that'll be July, August, and September, which if I can get it finished, means that I could potentially get it framed in early October and then it would be something I could display for um, the Halloween week or longer if I like. Okay, and then finally for the fourth quarter of the year, I am going to be working on my Chatelaine and I have it on my scroll rods. I'm going to try to show this to you guys without making too big a mess. Okay. So there is what I have currently accomplished. The top quarter is basically done. I finished that this year. I'm sorry for the hanging threads, but I don't have another hand to move them. So this is the jackrabbit and the rattlesnake. You kind of see the rattlesnake, I think, has all that cool beading, so it's really shimmery. And then I have the center medallion done. Now, honestly, I don't think even 30 days is going to finish this sucker up. It's just too massive. But what I would like to do is finish this border that goes around the outside and then start on the two vignettes that are in those two triangular side pieces. I love this piece. I'd like to have it done. I have several other chatelaines that I would like to do, but I am not starting another chatelaine until I get this one done. So we'll see how far I get in those 30 days. And with any luck, I'll have made enough progress that I feel like if I make it a focus in 2022, I could finish that final 25% at the bottom. So fingers crossed that that all works out that way because that would be fantastic. I kept that kind of to the last for October, November, December, figuring that um, I wouldn't get it done and I'll just work on it steadily for those three months and kind of focus on getting, getting that accomplished. Okay, so let's talk now. Those are all my non-full coverage pieces and we're gonna move on to full coverage pieces if I can find the page I have that written down on. Yes, here we go. Um, all of these are done on pre-gridded 25 count even weave. It's just what I like. I like one strand full crosses. And so it takes me a while to get through things, but I'm totally okay with that. Oh, matching cup. You'll get to see this project shortly. Society 6 is where I ordered that. Amy Stewart has all, not all, a lot of her artwork there. Okay, let us start with the one that I just had out, which you saw if you watched my other video. This is the ornament version of A Long Winter's Nap, artwork by Donna Gelsinger and charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. It is this circular shape. I accomplished quite a bit on it this year. Uh, I just had this page done, finished this page earlier this year, and then cranked through this page, which is not quite a full page, in December with about 6,500 stitches into it. Really happy with this. My, um, this will be out, all of these will be out at some point this year for various and sundry full coverage uh, prompts, challenges, whatever. This, I think, is slated to come out for at least a thousand stitches in January just because it fits a prompt for our bingo challenge. So I thought what I might do for this one, because this might be kind of fun and help keep me motivated to just keep going, is since I've come across, this is the center piece, right? So there's another page to here, basically to finish the whole way across, across the width, and that's the widest part. I thought it might be fun if I came this way and worked around in kind of a clockwise, is that clockwise, counterclockwise fashion. So if I come up and do this page, I'll have like a por partial page to finish, and then I'll have almost all of a page here and almost all of a page here before I have another 
kind of tapering down this way. So I thought that would keep me motivated because I'll have page finishes even though they aren't full pages. And the very last thing I will work on then is the gray tabby that's on Santa's lap, which is, to be honest, kind of the reason I picked this. I just love that zonkered cat. <laughs> that's such a, such a cat thing. Um, so this next section right here is going to be um, fairly confetti heavy because we'll go back into the ornaments plus this bits of his hair and this top part of the chair. Um, but I think that that's going to be my plan for this. In general, I would like to see if I can put about 10,000 stitches into each of my full coverage projects this year. Uh, more would be great, but the plan, I told you that I'm going to be doing 10 days a month with my non-full coverage pieces. I'd like to do 10 days that's focus, meaning I'm going to have one project that I'm going to try to put those 10 days in, in on that's full coverage. And then the rest of the month, I'm either going to try to work on something that's a full coverage fanatics challenge, meaning whatever we have set up for that month, this month it'll be bingo, uh, upcoming month will be bingo. So I'll have a lot of projects that I might just put a thousand stitches in to just kind of roll through them. And then other months, I may decide I just want to focus on something for the remaining 10 days of the month that I can get a page finish or reach some other smaller goal on things, but tentatively, that's what I plan to do. Okay, next up, um, let me haul these out. So I've got all the artwork to show you. Next up is um, a project that I started the previous month, this year. Uh, this is Beloved, artwork by Adele Sessler and Chartered by Heaven and Earth Designs. I adore this artwork, I love it. One of our full coverage members um, finished hers, I believe, or so close that she might as well have finished it. Um, I am not that close. So here's where I am currently on this, just on page one. I'm about halfway done page one, so another 4,000 stitches and page one will be finished. So that is where this one is currently. I like working on that one because with the limited color palette, I think there's 25 colors, 20, 27 colors. You don't have to switch colors very often, which is really nice. Um, Let's see, next is Winter's Encounter. This is the mini version, artwork by Laura Prindle, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. There's a theme there. Mm -hmm. I love this one because it reminds me of my boy, Ben. Ben was not a quarter horse. He was actually a black bay Arabian, but just the way this horse is standing and the size of his rear end reminds me a lot of my, my boy, Ben. Uh, so this one, I am about 30% done on this. So I have this, hang on, this page, this page, and this page completely done. There is a page that has like 30, it's 30 stitches deep or thereabouts or 27 stitches deep to come across underneath this little sparrow chickadee thing. And obviously I'm working on this page right here. So that will be where I get back to it. This is, I was pleasantly surprised by this mini. I worried that the detail would be maybe not as great, but I actually think it's, it's perfectly fine. I think it's gonna look amazing when it's done and be reasonably frameable in terms of size. So, um, there's that one. Haven't worked on this one in a while. This is one I, I guess I tend to like to work on it when it's wintry, but anyway, it will be out. Pretty much everything I have, I think, will be out for bingo um, for one month or another. I'm not going to go for a blackout. I mean, 25,000 stitches for me in a month is more than I can do, but um, 
I feel like I can at least get one row diagonal or column um, and maybe a second one. We'll see. Uh, this one I also started this year. It has the least number of stitches in because I just did a thousand stitches on it and then I haven't worked on it since, but looking forward to getting this one back out. This is What You're Reading by Stephanie Law. It is the max color version, but nicely enough, it is not crazily massive. It's only 18 by 14, basically. And it's this girl and her cat reading while the dragon kind of peers over their shoulder. I love uh, Stephanie Law's art, so this is this was a fun one to get started on. Um, and again, not much to see because a thousand stitches in these projects doesn't go very far, but hey, there's some dark gray, so page one. Other than the ornament, I pretty much always start my full coverage pieces in that upper left-hand corner. That's just where I like to start, and it seems to work pretty well with how my brain reads the pattern and how I like to work across the pattern. Um, so, you know, go with what works, right? Okay, next up, which way? This is one that is also a mini. Artwork is by Molly Harrison. And I am about 30% done on this one as well. I don't know, 30% you just kind of really start like the design is far enough along that you can see that you're making progress and you're not just stitching background, which is awesome. So I have the entire width, have the entire width of the, the project done and I've come down and I've started on the next page down. And this page is a little bit bigger than a page. It has like a column and a little bit. So it's, it's, a, it's extra beyond a page, but there's where the bottom of the page is right there. love working on this one and now i'm getting all to all the fun part right i mean i'm getting to the hanging jack-o-lantern lanterns and her uh, star-studded cape and all of that crazy hair which i love and i think that this page gets me like the cat's ears pretty sure that that is in this space right here so i love these all so much i would I just I enjoy working on them. I find full coverage very relaxing and very soothing and it's like its own little zen world of counting squares. Okay, now the two big ones. I'm not sure I even, did I bring my artwork? I thought I had the artwork for that. I did not, okay. A stitching shelf. This is my oldest full coverage piece. I started this in 2017. I made good progress on it this year, uh, more progress actually than I thought I would probably make. Um, and it is going to be out in January for our bookshelf challenge in uh, Full Coverage Fanatics, which is the classics. So I'll be working on at least one book worth of stitches on this, possibly two, and it will also be double dipped for some bingo prompts. I am in the upper, upper shelf. I purchased this before Pattern Keeper and I got the large format chart. So the pages are a little bit different than some of the ones that you've probably seen out in the world of the internets, but. Okay. <laughs> Here's where I am. I was about here this year and I have, is that true? Yes, about here this year. So I've worked across all of this and I have this page, and then I have one full page and one partial page left. So about to there, left to go on this. So I'm feeling like for sure in 2021, I will be able to have that top row completed, which will be fantastic. Long way to go on it, but I believe this one is at 12% 12, 12 maybe? I think that's right, like 12 and a half percent. Loads of confetti in that, but it's awesome to work on. Now, 
I don't know, I had my artwork set out. You all will just have to go with me on this one. Um, I will put a link down below to uh, the Once Upon a Fairy Tale, or you can Google it. There's a gazillion people working on it. Um, I started this January 1st of 2020, and so I have just over 21,000 stitches into it in 2020 and that is as far as I got. This is the super size max color version. I'm starting in the center bottom row. So this is the obviously the book and I have started this beautiful white horse and the princess or the queen and gone this way and I've been working over here. So um, Jemima, the rocking stitcher, and I are going to uh, do another kind of casual stitch along. She's working on one of the upper corners, upper right corner. It's like over here on the mock-up, whatever that corner is. So she and I did our 20 and 20 together this past year. We're just going to do 10K on our respective Once Upon a Fairy Tales this year which is great because I mean 10,000 stitches is 10,000 stitches right uh there's a long way to go if I've stitched 21,000 stitches and I'm only three percent in but you know if you don't put the stitches in you're also not going to get it finished so those are all of my active whips I hope that the description of kind of what I'm doing this next year made sense with my four quarters worth of focus projects that are not full coverage and then a whole bunch of full coverage for everything else um, the nice thing about full coverage fanatics is that you can you know double dip triple dip whatever dip multiple projects in multiple challenges so for instance stitching shelf I'm gonna use for our bookshelves challenge I'm gonna use it for at least some of these stitch around Iceland challenge and I'm going to use it for our January bingo challenge for several of those squares. Excuse me. Um, it's just a good way to kind of keep motivating yourself to put in more stitches. Um, like I said, I think most of my full coverage projects will wind up showing up in the bingo rotation. Um, maybe not all of them, but I think at least five of the seven. Yeah, I think at least five of the seven will show up. So you'll get to see everything else kind of with progress again for next year um, in, in January. I am also going to try this year really hard to keep records like Kim keeps records because she has so much amazing statistics about what she's done in terms of page finishes, in terms of stitches finished and days stitched and all that good stuff. Um, so I have an idea vaguely of how much I've gotten done this past year, but it's certainly not anywhere as codified as that. And I would like to be able to present those numbers to you when we come back around at the end of 2021. Um, it definitely helps with planning to know. I mean, if you know, okay, this past year I stitched 20,000 stitches into this project and did other things, okay, great. I know I can stitch 20,000 stitches and still have other things done. Um, if, I tr if I'm trying for the 10,000 stitches per project, then you know I'm looking at with seven full coverage projects, that's 70,000 stitches into my full coverage projects plus my other focus pieces. Um, we'll see how I can how I go with that. Um, I did get a little bit over 6,500 stitches put into Long Winter's Nap just this month, but I've also had a lot of stitching time this month, and next year work is going to be busier than this year, I think. So um, we'll just we'll see how it shakes out. But I would like to try to have some numbers together for you guys um, when I do this next year. Uh, if you have any questions about design names or any of that information, please feel free to leave me a comment below. I'd be glad to share more with you if you need to know it. Um, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed my whip parade and um, hopefully you're inspired to do a lot of stitching in 2021. I know I am and I'm really looking forward to January 1st to kick off all of the fun. Um, 
All right, I think that's it for now, guys. Um, like I said, my normal uh, Fiber Floss and Fiction podcast uh, has just gotten recorded. So if you're interested, pop on over and take a look at that. And I will be back in a couple of weeks with that another normal podcast for y'all once 2021 gets started. So happy new year, everybody. Um, enjoy, take care, be safe, and I will talk to y'all later. Bye.